ESPN should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. They released the top 100 players list, at least from 100 to 51, and Derek White was not included, while ex-Celtics Grant Williams was included. I, it, there's a lot of stuff going on in this list. But before we get into that, we got some resulting votes from the GM voting, voting on various things in the NBA, such as best overall players, best defensive players, best wings, all this kind of stuff. And there were a lot of Boston Celtics making appearances, so you want to stick around for all of that on this episode of Celtics Digest. But before we get into the video, as always, for those of you who have come back a lot, you'll know this reminder's coming, but it's a reminder to hit subscribe because there are thousands of people watching every single video who have not hit that button. And if you like our content here, you like our daily Boston Celtics news, click the button down below for news, game reactions, trades, everything Boston Celtics all season long. Bruce, let's jump into this. And the first thing we got to talk about from the GM voting is Jason Tatum. And he was voted the top small forward in the NBA by general managers. Who's the best small forward in the NBA? 47% of general managers said that Jason Tatum was the best small forward in the NBA, followed by Kevin Durant and perpetual three-position player Luka Doncic, because we can't really decide on him. But not only that, they also said that the Boston Celtics were tied with the reigning champion Denver Nuggets to have the best odds at winning the finals with the Milwaukee Bucks a little bit of a distant third. So, Bruce, I mean, talking about this first, it's just awesome to see that Jason Tatum is getting this kind of recognition. I think we could have predicted this, but to see that other GMs agree is just, you know, it's always nice to see. Exactly. I think personally that Jason Tatum last year kind of showcased how he was one of the most dominant small forwards in the league, kind of put on the map that he was going to be a superstar for the league as well. And obviously the GM saw that by voting him the best small forward. I personally think that he's going to un unlock something this season, go for his MVP season this year, like he has been in the past. Obviously, I think he'll be one of the top contenders for that. And by being the best small forward, you obviously have to do that. Obviously beating guys like Kawhi Leonard, who has had some injury problems, LeBron James, historically known as the best small forward in the league, but has slowed down in some time. Kevin Durant has had some injuries as well. And then Luka Doncic being there. I think that it's fair to say that Jason Tatum is the best small forward as he contributes to both sides of the ball, offensive and defensively. And we haven't seen that much injuries come out of him recently. Yeah, well, I mean, there's that whole wrist thing, and we're hoping that that's uh, not going to be anything more than just a slight trouble early on in, in the preseason. But the, but you're right, I think his two-way play really, really helps him with this. And while Kevin Durant has come around as a defender more recently in his career, Jason Tatum is, I mean, other than Kawhi Leonard, who, again, we can't ever really necessarily say is playing, he's the best two-way player on that list. And he was also voted top five in MVP uh, by the GMs as an MVP candidate. So Jason Tatum is everywhere on this list. The Boston Celtics are everywhere. But it's not just them. There's another Boston Celtic that made a name for himself on these lists, Bruce. And that is Drew Holiday. And oh man, look, we knew what we were getting in Drew Holiday. An elite perimeter defender who can score, who can shoot the ball, who is the perfect fit for the Boston Celtics. But when the GMs were asked about various defensive categories, they were very, very high on him as well. Let's show you. Who is the best perimeter defender in the NBA? 50%. Half of the people who were asked said that Drew Holiday is the single best perimeter defender in the NBA, followed by Mikhail Bridges, Alex Caruso, Mark Smart, Kawhi Leonard, all of, the, all of those people very clearly being worthy of being on this list. But, uh, you know, maybe there's a bit of a Derek White erasure here as well, but oh boy, we'll get into him later. But not only was Drew Holiday listed as the number one perimeter defender, he was listed as number two as the best defensive player in the NBA. We have Defensive Player of the Year's Draymond Green, Marcus Smart, Jared Jad, like Giannis, all these guys, deep points, and then Drew Holiday, right there at number two behind just Giannis. Bruce, that is crazy to me. I mean, clearly GMs have such a high respect for Drew Holiday. There's a reason he's been traded multiple times in his career for a haul, but, uh, you know, it makes me feel really good seeing how much other front offices value this player. Same here. I'm very happy that Brad went in and got us Drew Holiday after seeing these rankings because now it makes me feel more confident in Drew Holiday as a player that the other GMs feel that he's recognized as well. Obviously, being the best perimeter defender in the NBA, I think he deserves that title. Other guys that I think deserve to be up there like Marcus Smart, Alex Crusoe, guys like that. They definitely deserve to be up there. But Drew Holiday being an all-star, you know, multiple times, being known for his perimeter defense, I definitely think that he deserves to be the top guy. When you look at the second best defender, though, in the whole NBA, for me, that gives me some shocks as well, because guys, like you said, Marcus Smart, Jaron Jackson, guys that were defensive player of the years in the past he's ahead of and that makes me feel very confident in this team and it kind of makes me think that the milwaukee bucks are a little scared now letting go of drew holiday because they would have had both the top two defenders in the nba if they had Giannis Antetokounmpo and drew holiday on their roster 
Well, I mean, they did have him for a while, and guess what? It won him a championship, and I guess, you know, the proposition to Damian Lillard is always really nice, and you gotta wonder if the Boston Celtics had had Drew Holiday, maybe they would have done the same thing, I don't know. But yeah, you're right, I mean, you know, going for an offensive, like, it's crazy the Bucks transition, I don't want to make this a Bucks video, but to go from, like, a great defensive team to now just an all-out offensive team is kind of wild, but uh, but yeah, it's really awesome to see that other front offices really value Drew, I mean, we value Drew a ton, hoping he can bring a ton to this team, super excited for this season, and hey, maybe Drew has a deep boy in his near future. <laughs> but uh, look, we're going to talk about some defensive Celtics guards, and look, I, I was a bit, I was a bit harsh in the intro, you know, maybe, like, but, but... It's just, it's kind of ridiculous, okay? Look, ESPN listed, they're doing their top 100 list. They do this every year. You guys all know this. Any basketball fan knows this, okay? So today they released the 100 to 51, right? Fair enough. You see that? And some people were like, oh, Derek White's not here. Wow, is he top 50? No. Whoops. Not that. I'm, yeah, I'm flustered. He didn't make the list. He didn't make the list. There's a team of 150 reporters, editors, producers, and analysts. They were asked to rank players based on their predicted contributions. And even Kevin Pelton, in a follow-up article, was like, it's just the single most glaring omission. Boston outscored opponents by 11 points per 100 possessions with him. Dropped to 1.3 without him. Like, he just, he was so good. Career high 38% from three. He had that buzzer beater in game six. He does everything you want for winning basketball. Yeah, did he average the most beautiful numbers? No, like 12, 5, and 5. But he was all defense. He does everything you could want. I think he had a better season than Marcus Smart last year. And Marcus Smart was ranked top 60 on this list. You know who was on this list? And Derek White wasn't? Grant. Grant Williams. They played on the same team last year. Grant Williams was benched in the playoffs. Derek White was clutch for this team. He worked all season long for them. He was all defense. There's some insane people on this list, like Jordan Poole. I get it's projected. Maybe they think Derek White's going to come off the bench and not put up great stats with Drew Holiday, but Jordan Poole doesn't contribute to winning basketball. Is he going to score a cool 24 game for the Wizards? Maybe, but at the same time, there's just so many people on this list that should not be ahead of Derek White. As you can tell, I'm a little frustrated by this. I can see why you are frustrated. I was personally uh, mad at myself and when seeing this list as well. I was kind of like astonished that they didn't give Derek White his recognition. Like you said, hitting that game six buzzer beater kind of felt solidified his fate in Boston, kind of gave him some life with the fans. Everyone kind of appreciated him for that, obviously. And when you look at like the rankings and stuff, you would think he would be on there, especially over a guy like Grant Williams, who, yes, like you said, is projected he's going to a team with Dallas, so he's going to have a bigger role. But like you said, last season, he was benched in the playoffs. Derek White, I thought, excelled over him. And I thought that Derek White made his role more prominent on the Celtics because he was supposed to be the starting guard for this team before we got Drew Holiday. And Grant Williams was shipped out. And we brought Jordan Walsh to replace him. So I personally think that a guy like Derek White should definitely be on that list. A guy like Jordan Poole as well, like you said, can kind of go for scoring points, can kind of be there for the for the Wizards. But to be honest, I don't know if he's a better player than Derek White. But I think how they're looking at it is they're viewing Derek White as a fifth or sixth option for the Celtics team. And that's why they're ranking him so low because they don't think he's going to be as effective offensively. But offensive isn't the whole part of the game of basketball. Defense is a big part too. And he has made defensive teams in the past. So that is a big thing that you got to look at as well. Yeah, and, and you know what? You make fair points. You know, if I if I come back down to earth for a minute and I look at this, this new <laughs> Celtics roster, right? You have you bring in Kristaps Porzingis, you bring in Drew Holiday, who immediately jump over Derek White in the pecking order, at least offensively. And last year, Derek White has a very solid argument at being the third most important player on the Boston Celtics besides Tatum and Brown, right? And you have Robert Williams. He's also on this list, which is, I guess, no surprise. He's a bit above Grant Williams, but. Like, White has done so much for this Boston Celtics roster, like you said. And I don't see his points per game dropping that much. I can see him still averaging 10 to 12 a game. I can still see him starting, even with Drew Holiday. I can see him bringing that same level of defensive intensity. And I thought he was better defensively than Marcus Smart last year. Um, maybe just last year. Again, Marcus Smart has obviously a full career, especially perimeter defense-wise, right? And he was all defense for a reason. And, and I just feel like his importance, a guy like a Derek White, Bruce, a guy that grinds game in game out is always there when you need him is extremely reliable puts up solid stats with all defense level numbers with his advanced metrics being crazy showing he's one of the most important players on the team those guys are not recognized by these analysts who often just look at numbers right again like jordan pool if he averages 24 5 and 5 like holy crap i mean pretty much at 99 of people you ask are gonna say oh he's better than Derek white who put up 12 5 and 5 you know and that i understand that but at the same time i just feel like guys like Derek white Guys who play his brand of basketball and bring as much as he does to a team, I feel like they just often get way too overlooked. I totally agree with you on that as well, on that take. A guy like Derek White, like you said, is not going to be... He'll be a main focal point of this offense. He's going to be a 
main contributor for this team. But in the likes of comparing him to a Jordan Poole who's going to be dropping 25 points, it's going to be overshadowed. And I think that the Celtics have some of those players on their roster as well, where you've seen plays from Marcus Smart in the past where they don't show up on the stat sheet, where Marcus Smart maybe looks like he had a bad game, but in reality, he actually played his heart out in the soul defensively and helped the Celtics win. And I think even guys like Brissett and Stevens, you'll see some impacts from them as well, where they'll be crashing the boards and actually fighting for stuff and those might not come on the stat sheets as well which is kind of sad for guys like them and guys like Derek White but ultimately I think Derek White's still gonna have a great season this season for the Boston Celtics and I still think that he can be able to prove these ESPN writers wrong and actually be a top 100 player next season yeah I hope so too and look there were there was a lot of Celtics on this list of course Chris has Porzingis coming in above Rudy Gobert, which is pretty nice. And again, love to see Marcus Smart always on this list, even though I think, like, look, I, I just think him and Derek White are comparable seasons. I don't see how you have at least a 40-player gap between the two. That's kind of where I'm... Uh, does Marcus Smart maybe deserve to be ahead? Yeah. I mean, like, look, let's. I think Marcus Smart is maybe a better player, right? But but at the same time, I thought last season, you have a good argument for Derek White. And again, the Grant Williams, Robert Williams, Emmanuel Quickly, maybe. There's just a lot of guys on this list. Go check out this list for yourselves, guys, because it's, uh, it's a bit of a frustrating read when you know that Derek White is nowhere to be found. But that'll do it for this news episode of Celtics Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 1,000. We're getting so close. We're almost at 800. And if you're still watching right now and you're not one of the first 800 subscribers, what are you doing? Hit the button. You just watched this whole video. You clearly enjoyed it. And there's a lot more where this comes from. I'm Josh Goss from my co-host, Bruce Velez. We'll catch you in the next one.